Hi there! Are we ready to do another lesson? I hope you guys are having a great week of online school and never leaving your house and hanging out with your parents and your siblings. I know that my kids are uh, liking that the weather is starting to get hot because they're swimming in the backyard pool. I know we saw from our spotlight videos last week that uh, some of you have been using uh, pools in your backyard or getting away, maybe going to a lake or something. I hope you guys are uh, having fun with your family. Um, also, I hope that you're taking this time to, uh, for those of you that can read, to spend time reading the Bible. Uh, you know, read the New Testament. You can start in Matthew and start reading. Matthew will be one of the verse, scripture verses today. So take this time to uh, get more and more and more involved uh, and well-versed in reading the Bible. Today's topic, what we're going to talk about today, is the Upside-Down Kingdom. But before we get into the Upside-Down Kingdom, I have a game for us. Okay? Let me uh, shrinkity shrink my screen and let me get my game loaded up. Okay, today's game is a hidden object game. Oh, let me move myself uh, out of here. Okay, so today's game is a hidden object game. Okay, hidden object game. Uh, I've identified these five objects on the side here that you need to find in this picture and I'll give you a couple minutes to look and if I didn't give you enough time you can always hit pause on the video and take some more time but in addition to these five objects there are a whole lot of extra objects that you can find so start with these five and keep track of how many objects you find okay and at the end, we'll go through some of the objects that I found. And if I miss some, you can send a text message. Have your mom or dad send a text message to Miss Michelle, and she'll let me know of the ones that we missed. And uh, we can talk about those next week. Okay, so start looking for your objects. Go. I should probably have some music like boop a doop boop a doop boop skeep a doop beep a doop beep a doop skeep a doop dop a doop beep a doop bop a doop you're welcome for that amazing music jam time okay that was one minute now if you want more time you can always pause the video and take more time but I'm going to start going over some of the objects that we found okay first we'll do the five on the side here we have the button okay the button is right here button next we have the boomerang i hope you found the boomerang the boomerang is right here in the ear of the elephant next we have the seashell did you guys find the seashell? It's right here in the girl's hair. Next, we have the envelope. Did you find the envelope? The envelope is right here in the wall. Now we have the snail. Did you find the snail? 
the snail is right here in this guy's air. Now there's a whole lot of other objects in the picture and I'm going to show you some of the ones that I found and let me know if I missed any. I saw a sock right here. Here's a sock. Here's a baseball bat. Right? Here's a toothbrush in this guy's hat. Okay. Here's a paintbrush back here. Paintbrush. Okay. Did you guys find some more objects? If you did, let me know if you found more objects than that. You can find, uh, you can ask your mom or dad to go online and search for hidden object games, and there's a lot of pictures like this that you can find and have fun uh, finding hidden pictures. Okay, next we're going to move on and look at some spotlights. Spotlights of some of you kids. I've been really enjoying seeing the videos of you guys, of listening to what you're doing and what kind of uh, fun things you're doing and your interests. And so this week we have four spotlights. Okay, four different spotlights. Now, I need to give a, a first a little uh, apology. I had some technical difficulties and so uh, these videos are a little not as crisp video as normal but you get to hear the voice and you know what they look like so it won't bother you okay so first video doo -doo 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 -doo. Hi everyone, my name is oh it's sideways I'm not sure why that is uh, technical difficulties okay I fixed my technical uh, difficulty and so we're going to start over. Uh, this is Carolina. And let me uh, get the volume situation uh, worked out here. Here we go. Hi, everyone. My name is Carolina. Yes. What is your favorite color? Rainbow. Rainbow? You have a favorite color in the rainbow? Right, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, pink. <laughs> and what is your favorite food? Spaghetti and meatballs and the spaghettios nice. and big poop of ice cream for de for dessert. Nice. And what is your favorite thing to do during this time? Um, play with my dog and spending time with my family. Nice. Does your dog do anything cool? Uh, she rolls in the grass like donkey, donkey, monkey. Donkey, donkey, monkey. <laughs> nice. Bye, everyone. Have a good day. Okay, good job, Carolina. Next, we have our three sisters. And, well, I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Anna. Hi, my Oops, name is... Wrong screen. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, here we go. Hi, my name is Anai. I like to play with my new puppy named Sasha. I want to go back to school. I hate online school. It's hard. Um, and I, And I like to play outside... Play on my tablet, and uh, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And um, I just want to try out my new bike. Bye. Good job. That was a good one. Okay. Hi, my sister. name is Raya, and. What I like is my toys, and during schoolwork, I've just been doing, like, kind of hard work, kind of easy stuff. And during quarantine, I've just been playing with my toys. All right. That was a good one. 
Next one. Hi, my name is Zion. Hi. And online school has been easy for me. And um, I've been doing great. And I miss going to church. I really want to go there. And quarantine is not good. <laughs> and I have a pet dog, and his name is Sasha. And I miss you guys. Hope I could see you again when, like, the quarantine is getting better slightly. So, and yeah, bye bye. Bye. Those were great. Great to see everybody and to hear what you guys are doing and what you like and about how online school is going. So if you haven't sent in your spotlight, if you haven't done a video and you want to do a video, talk to your mom and dad and they can talk to Miss Michelle and can coordinate how to get me those videos. Uh, we'd love to see uh, what you guys are doing and what you're up to and see your beautiful faces. So if you remember last week, we talked about church and that church is made up of people. And the people, you guys, are the church. And the church as a collection of people is inside of the upside down kingdom. Remember, we've talked about the upside down kingdom over here. Uh, you've seen this. Uh, I kind of drew it on the marker board before. And so I made a little better graphics for us today. So this is the story of the Bible. And remember in the New Testament, Jesus tells us about the upside down kingdom where instead of using the sword and might to rule the kingdom, he died on the cross to become king of the kingdom. And so now we are in the upside down kingdom. But what does that mean exactly? What does it mean to be in the upside down kingdom and if we are in the upside down kingdom what should we do and where is the kingdom so one of the things I like to do when I'm reading the Bible is to read a version of the Bible that has red text uh, for what Jesus says Oh, let me adjust this. My face is covering up some of the words. There we go. Uh, so the new, if you have a digital Bible, the New American Standard, NASB, has red text for what Jesus says. My favorite translation, the one that we use in church, uh, the blue Bibles that you guys have all used, uh, that's the CEV, the Common English Version, but that version doesn't do the red text, which I'm a little disappointed in. But... So let's look in the book of Mark. So this is Mark. Uh, remember this, Mark is one of the Gospels. So the Gospel, remember, Gospel means good news. And it's the good news about King Jesus. And if we look at the list of the books of the Bible, it's in the New Testament. So the New Testament starts here. It's the second version of the story of Jesus. Remember, we have four biographies of Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that all tell the story of Jesus. So we're going to look in Mark. Uh, I can't close this. There we go. We can look in Mark, and I just want to look in Mark and scroll down and look at what Jesus, the first thing that Jesus said. So we're just going to scroll down and look for the first thing. Oh, the first, this is the first thing that Jesus said. I would think since it's what Jesus said it's important, and Mark puts it as the very first thing that Jesus said, so it's a little extra important. So he says, the time is fulfilled. So that means the time is now, currently. Right now the time is. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Well, what does the at hand mean? Do you guys know what at hand means? That's a phrase that... We don't really use that much. Have you ever said the words at hand? 
Probably not. But what it means is uh, the kingdom of God is here, meaning it's in my hand. I can grab it and touch it. It's right here. So the kingdom of God is here right now. And then, and then Jesus goes on to say, repent. Have you used that word, repent? That's not a word that we use very often, but it's a simple word. It just means turn around, change direction. So change direction, turn around, and believe in the gospel. And remember, the gospel means the good news. So Jesus is telling us uh, two things here. He's telling us that the kingdom of God is here now, right in your hand. That's figuratively. You're not holding it in your hand, but it's here right next to you. And to have to be in the kingdom of God, all you have to do is turn around and believe in the good news. Okay, So that's how you become part of the kingdom is you turn around and you believe the good news that Jesus is the Son of God. So next we're going to look at a long passage. So I'm going to be doing some reading. So I know I have an amazing reading voice, and you all are going to love it. We're going to bounce back to Matthew. And we're, Matthew is a unique uh, gospel of Jesus because it has the longest red chunks where Matthew has taken all the stuff that Jesus said and has put them all together into these big long chunks. You can see, look at how much red we have. Red, red, red. Jesus just talking and talking and talking and Matthew's just getting it all down for us. It's amazing. But we're going to start in 543. And so this is this whole chapter, couple chapters, is called uh, the Sermon on the Mount. See how it says the Sermon on the Mount? And by mount, they mean mountain, but don't think of Rocky Mountains like in Colorado with snow on the top, uh, where, where Jesus uh, was in Galilee uh, and Jerusalem. They didn't have those kind of high mountains, but uh, when people saw the highest hill, they called it a mountain because that was the highest thing that they could see. Now, we know uh, living in the United States that there's, in the United States, there's giant, huge, massive mountains. So we have a different frame of mind about what the word mountain means. So it's called the Sermon on the Mount, quite simply because he went up on the mountain and sat down and he opened his mouth and began to teach. Okay, so he's on a mountain side. So think of it like he's on a hill. Here, I'll draw you a little picture. So it's more like this. So he's on a hill. Here's a hill. We'll make Jesus in blue. Here's Jesus. He's chilling. He's sitting there. And then all the people are sitting down the mountain on the side of the mountain, so that his voice, ah, they can all hear him, okay? So he's on the mountain, okay? And he just starts teaching, and he's teaching and teaching and teaching and teaching and teaching and telling us all about the upside-down kingdom. And we're going to skip down to verse 43. And so he's changing what we think. He's changing the kingdom. He's changing the world and making it upside down. He's saying, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Right? That makes sense. That you're going to love your friends and someone who hates you, you're not going to like them. But Jesus turns it upside down and says, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Now, persecute isn't a phrase that we use very often. Persecute means to harass and hassle and attack. Okay, so pray for those who attack you. And why should we do that? So that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. 
for he causes his sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Well, what does that even mean? We're supposed to love our enemies and pray for the people who attack us because we want to be like God? Huh, that's interesting. What does that mean? Well, what, he's, what Jesus is saying here is that uh, God causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good. So does the warm, beautiful sunrise, does only people who are good see it? No, people who are good and bad both get the benefit of the sun. So, G, so God doesn't uh, hate the people you think he should hate. Even if they're evil, he still loves them. He sends the rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. It's the same idea that even if someone is bad, God still loves them. And then Jesus goes on to say, For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? Now, tax collectors in their day were people who betrayed, who were, uh, they betrayed the people. Because remember, at this point in history, the Roman Empire was in charge of Jerusalem and they were oppressing the Jewish people. But some Jewish people changed sides, and they said, we'll help you, Romans, even though you're persecuting us and hating on us. And, and those were the tax collectors. So Jesus is saying, even people who we think are evil, the tax collectors who we think are evil, don't they love the people who love them and hate the people who hate them? It's not that big of a deal. You've got to flip it upside down and love everyone. He goes on to say, if you greet only your brothers, so only your people that you're tight with, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles, so those are the non-Jewish people, do the same? So Jesus is saying, don't be like everybody else. Everybody else loves the people who love them, hates the people who hate them. And he's saying, turn it upside down. Love everyone. He says, therefore, you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now remember, who put the chapter breaks here? We did. So he just kept right on talking. Matthew 6. What's his next thing that he tells us? Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. What is this rule in the upside down kingdom? What does practicing your righteousness even mean? Practicing your righteousness? Well, righteousness is to be in right standing or to do the right thing. So what Jesus is saying is beware of doing the right thing only for other people to see you. Do the right thing all the time, no matter who's watching. Then he goes on to say, So when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues. The synagogues were the Jewish churches. And in the streets, so that they may be honored by men. So he's saying, he's not saying if you give to the poor, he's saying when. So you definitely should look for people who are less fortunate than you and help them. So when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet and say, Everybody, look at me. I'm doing a good deed. Does everybody see this good deed that I'm doing? Look over here at the goodness that I'm doing because I'm goody goody. Jesus is saying, don't do that. Other people may look, other men, and by this word men is actually humans, other humans they don't mean just men, they mean men and women, all humans. You're going to be honored by men. So he goes on to say, truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. So just having people see them, that's their reward. But when you give to the poor, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. What? What does he mean by that? Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing? How is that even 
possible. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Wait, what's my hand doing? I don't know what it's doing. Stop! Well, this is a this is just a phrase. Like we have phrases like it's raining cats and dogs or or it's uh freezing cold in here. Well, it's not sometimes it is, but we'll use that phrase and it's not actually freezing, right? Or you might say, you know, my uh another phrase would be uh, uh oh, this thing is so cold, it's cold as ice, but it's not actually ice, right? So these are phrases. What this meant was don't do it in public. Do it in private. Do it where you're not trying to get other people to see, right? Don't be like a YouTuber who's like, hey, I'm a YouTuber and look at all the amazing things I'm doing. I recorded this and then I posted on YouTube so everybody could see how generous I was. Okay? He's saying don't do that. He's saying so that you're giving will be in secret, and your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. So in the upside-down kingdom, right, love people who don't like you, and when you give to the poor, don't do it so that other people see. Next, what does he say? When you pray, again, just like the poor, he's not saying if, He's saying, when, when you pray, you are not to be like the hypocrites. Does everybody know what hypocrite means? Hypocrite is someone who says one thing and does the other. Okay, say one thing and do something different. Okay. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogue. Remember, that's the Jewish word for church building, the church building. They love to stand and pray in the church building and on the street corners so that they may be seen by men. Again, men means people. Be able to be seen by all the people. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. What does he mean by this? Again, it's the same thing. You don't need to have to say, look at me, look at how amazing I am. Mom, dad, I'm sharing with my siblings. Mom, Dad, look at me. I am doing the right thing. Just do the right thing. He goes on to say, But you, when you pray, go into your inner room, close your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So we don't want our reward coming from other people seeing us. We don't want our reward to be likes on Facebook or on Instagram or how many shares we got on YouTube or how many comments, right? That's not the reward we're looking for. The reward we're looking for is from our Heavenly Father. So when we are doing the things we know to do in the Upside Down Kingdom, we're going to do them without telling everybody what we're doing. So then he goes on to give us a formula for how to pray. Jesus goes on and says, And when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles, these are non-Jews, do, for they suppose that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. So what is Jesus saying here? He's saying your prayers don't have to be really, really long. And you don't have to say the same thing over and over and over. Please, 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 please. You don't have to do that. A short, concise, a short, just straightforward prayer. When you pray, it doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be minutes and minutes. It can be very short. If you're in a time of crisis, it can be as short as, God, help me. Don't have to even go that any farther than that. Help is all you need to say. Okay? And so Jesus then says, pray then in this way. And then he gave us a, a prayer. And this prayer is commonly called the Our Father because it starts with the words, Our Father. 
So we'll just read it. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed, that means uh, set apart and unique and special. Special is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, so our food, and forgive us our debts. And they didn't mean just money. They meant the things that we've done wrong. As we also forgive our debtors, so people who have done us wrong. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now one side note about the Our Father is see how this has a bracket around it? So this part in the bracket was added later. Jesus definitely didn't say that part. But most people feel like the prayer that Jesus, once he translated into English, the prayer just kind of ends. Just ends. But deliver us from evil, the end. Well, in our culture, how do we like to end our prayers? We like to say the word amen at the end. And who knows what the word amen means? Anybody? Amen? Does it mean one man? A man? No. Amen means let it be done or so let it be done. Make it happen. Okay? So what has, what's happened here in the at this part is that later... Uh, we looked at this prayer and said, Jesus, we don't like how you ended your prayer. We're going to add a little bit at the end so that it ends the way we like to pray. Now, this doesn't bother me because we like to pray and end in amen. That's fine. We are uh, in the United States. We are in a different culture than uh, Jesus. He was a Jewish person, and, and uh, this whole uh, Matthew was written in Greek. Uh, he probably was speaking Aramaic. So it doesn't bother me that we can end it. Because remember, Jesus said we can pray however we want. Just make it short. Okay? So again, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food that we need and forgive us our debts as we are forgiving all the people who owe us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the upside down kingdom. So Jesus gave us a window into the upside down kingdom. So let's do a quick review of what were the things that he gave us in the upside down kingdom. Where is my pen here? Okay, number one. Love, right? Love no matter what. Love, love, love. Okay? We are to be people of love. Two, help the poor. Right? Help the poor. And does this mean people who don't have money? Sure, but that's not only the people who are poor. Some people might be poor because they are sad. They might be poor because they're lonely. They might be poor because uh, in the traditional sense, in English, they don't have money. Okay, Just means they are not complete. Let's help anybody that you see that needs help. Okay. The next thing he said in the Upside Down Kingdom is don't boast. Don't boast, right? Who knows what boasting means? I spelled that right. You guys, that's the one thing I miss is normally when we're together, you guys spell check me. So now I have to use Google. I got it right. It just looks weird the way I wrote it. Hey, I got it right. Uh, don't boast. 
Okay, what does boasting mean? Boasting means telling everybody about how awesome you are, right? Jesus said that over and over. When you help the poor, don't tell everybody about it. When you're praying to God, don't tell everybody, hey, everybody, I said my prayers today, okay? Don't, don't boast. And the fourth thing he said in the upside down kingdom is pray What should we say? Pray basic. You don't need an elaborate prayer. You can have a basic, basic prayer. Okay? Basic prayer. And in the prayer, you do a couple basic things. Right? When we look in the prayer, he did a couple things. Right? He thanked God. Thank you for your kingdom, right? Thanks that the upside down kingdom is here. You know, thank you for giving me what I need, right? That's what this means, giving me what I need, the food that I need, right? And then help me to do the things I'm supposed to do. Love everybody and not do the things I shouldn't do, right? Okay, so this is the thing I want you to remember this week. Let's try to focus on these four things. Love, help the poor. So, and by poor, we mean anybody that needs help. Okay? Whether they need help because they're, uh, again, poor for all different kinds of reasons. Okay? Don't boast. Okay? You don't need to tell people when you're doing the right thing. Just do the right thing. And when you have your prayer time, let's pray basic, straightforward prayers. You don't need to pray long, long, long prayers. And to help us when we, uh, ending today, I'm actually going to end today by praying the Our Father. Okay, this is something that you guys can learn and memorize, and it's very, very, very helpful. Okay, so we're going to pray the Our Father. I'm going to switch over to the you know the version I like, the Common English version. Uh, common C V, Contemporary English version. Okay. And I'm going to skip down. Here we go. Here's the Our Father. So everybody close their eyes. We're going to end with this prayer. Our Father in heaven, Help us to honor your name. Come and set up your upside down kingdom so that everyone on earth will obey you and you are obeyed in heaven. Give us our food for today. Forgive us for the things that we did wrong and help us to forgive others. Keep us from being tempted to do wrong and protect us from anybody who wants to do wrong from us. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Again, if you haven't sent in your spotlight, have your mom or dad reach out to Miss Michelle. Um, also, uh, as a reminder, if uh, you want to download the coloring pages and the activity sheets, I keep forgetting to say that in these videos. Um, so quick reminder. Let me shrink this down. Let me pop out some sweet, sweet red. So talk to your mom or dad about, you can download activity sheets and coloring sheets by going to C, L, oops, let me start over. That looks horrible, horrible, horrible. C, L, dot, church, church, let me move myself, slash kids, cl.church slash kids. Type that into your browser. You'll get to the page on the Covenant Life site that has uh, all the videos that we've been doing for the kids' uh, church, as well as you can download coloring sheets uh, if you are a, uh, someone who can't read, hasn't learned to read yet. So if you're younger, kindergarten, um, 
and need the coloring sheets, or we have activity sheets with mazes and word finds and um, all kinds of things for the older kids. And you can watch all the old uh, videos from the previous weeks. Again, thank you, and let's do these four things this week.